When you get into podcast production, with time, you may start looking at upgrading your mixing plugins. Now in this video, I want to have a look at Neutron 3 Advanced from Isotope. Hi, it's Mike from Casefile and Casefile Presents. On this channel, I'm releasing videos on podcasting and audio production. So if you enjoyed the content, you can hit the like button. I'm not saying that you do need third-party plugins to do a proper mixing job. Not at all. You shouldn't spend any money when you start your podcasting journey. However, with time, when you learn and develop your skills, you may want to venture outside what, um, what came with your software of choice and look at some additional tools. Now, for my work, for production and restoration, I use tools from Isotope. I started on Alloy, which was their mixing plugin, now discontinued. And when they first released Neutron with their sort of machine learning assistive technology, I got the first version of the plugin. At the moment, I'm on version 3 of Neutron Advanced. And in the video, I want to show you how I got it all set up in my podcasting plugin. But first thing, um, if you want to get it, you can subscribe to their sort of music production school or whatever it's called, or you can purchase it either as a standalone plugin or as a part of a bundle. And you've got three versions to choose from, and it's uh, elements, standard, and advanced. So that depends on how deep you want to get into mixing. So without further ado, let's jump into my session and look at the settings that I use for podcast production. Right, I want to show you three examples of how I use Neutron in two different sessions. The first one is case file. So that's what I do pretty much every day. And uh, my podcasting template is also based on case file sessions. And from that, I build it or change it or adjust it to different projects, different sessions. Case file is a one man show. So we got only one narrator and um, that's the track here that's at the top. And of course I start with Neutron. Let's have a look at the modules that I'm using for enumeration. So I start with Sculptor, which is like a multiband compression. And as you can see, it's kind of very soft to use on that. So only half of it, it's blended. Just a little bit there, that's intensity. And the tone I set at minus five. So we can go to minus 50 and plus 50. And going below zero means it darkens the tone of uh, of the sound, in that case of narration. Then of course EQ, so for, as far as EQ goes, for narration I'm usually fighting low frequencies rather than sort of creatively boosting some other stuff. And you can hear on this example and see on this example. So high pass 97, he's male, hence why, and then um, some cuts there and there. I'm also sort of sloping down higher frequencies. We then move on to parallel compressors. So I've got two compressors working in tandem. One is of course a stronger one, so 3.4 to 1 on ratio. And uh, the second one, as you can see, it's blended only half of it and it's only 1.5 to 1. So another one just to sort of soften um, the compression. Exciter, it's bypassed at the minute. I had it on in the past, but I realized it brightened the sound a little bit too much when it came to the narration. So I'm not using it anymore. The interesting module that I'm using is Transient Shaper. In most instances, you would use that on percussions, on drums. You want these transients to even out. I use it for narration. Again, it's soft, it's only minus three um, degrees. And what it does, it attacks the syllables, first syllables of each line. So 
it is kind of as a compressor because what I find is that the narrators, the hosts, usually start the line quite loud and then the volume goes down uh, with the length of whatever paragraph they're narrating. If I play it, it's all muted, so just pay attention to the um, UI there, so the graphics UI. As you can see, it kind of um, has these first syllables of each line, and I find it working really nicely. Okay, moving on, I've got Neutron on a sound effect that's only at the beginning of episode there, and then the theme music, so it's just sort of compression Again, a bit of Sculptor, a bit of Exciter. Um, the more important one is the score. So I've got my score and then Andrew, who helps me with case file. And both of these are on Neutron again. And um, I'm starting with Sculptor. However, I'm not using it on higher frequencies because I find it sort of pushes the hiss a little bit too much. Then EQ, how I design the EQ is I usually go and um, select the masking. And when we push the sensitivity, we can see that these are the frequencies that clash with the narration. And that's where I'm sort of cutting them. And I'm also, as you can see, boosting high frequencies because uh, that's what lacking in the narration. So I want the music to fill that void. And then Exciter, I'm using Exciter on music. Um, the profile is warm and it's not you know it's only 33 blending here and there so just a little bit um saturation and then of course compression 2.4 to 1 uh, kind of soft so that's on both uh, score tracks and then of course we got our stereo mix bus so all the tracks are going through that auxiliary through stereo mix bus before they hitting the master track and I'm using Neutron to glue everything together. So then again, we got a lib of Sculptor there. We got EQ. Again, just cutting these uh, low end frequencies and just a little bit of that harshness in mid frequencies as well. And then I've got uh, another parallel compression there. Both kind of soft, as you can see, just blended half of the, of the plugin of the module. And the first one is 1.6 to 1 and the second is 1.5 to 1. So what I want to do is I want to have all these tracks going through this auxiliary and then glued together with EQ, but compression and sculptor. That's the important modules I'm using. So that's the case file session. That's my uh, template. Let's now have a look at a different session. So that's my session for Pseudoscience. It's the latest case file presents show available now for free on Spotify. As you can see, I've got more dialogue tracks there. Each one of them starts with Neutron. And then we got the same sort of setup that I'm using for case files. So the score, uh, stereo mix bus with Neutron, and then the master track. What was different in uh, this project is that Neutron was stripped down. Alice and Poppy wanted uh, intimate direct sound so I kind of kept it very very simple and as you can see there I'm only using EQ and uh, for Alice it cuts at 125 then I'm sort of cutting uh, lower mids there a little bit on the 3k and I'm boosting higher frequencies and just one compression uh, compressor uh, it's kind of soft one as well as you can see on the threshold and three to one ratio. And it's very similar story when it comes to Poppy. So again, only EQ and I'm cutting 125 again and boosting a little bit there and compressor it's two to one. So a little bit softer and all these modules that are bypassed are muted. Um, so yeah, so that was Again, I'm using Neutron, but very limited capacity on this product. So it just shows that I do adjust my template from product to product. Let's now have a look at my third example. When I'm making music, I've got my cue, uh, musical cue, 
and um, then several textures that I then mix to the narration. So in this instance, I've got six different tracks and that could be, you know, rhythm, piano, whatever. What I do before and all, as you can see from the automation, I mix it to the bit in the narration. So what I do before I start mixing, I go into Neutron. Let me just mute it because uh, we don't actually need to hear it. I would go to Neutron before I start writing automation, press the Mixed Assistant, Track Enhance, and then Auto Detect. What Neutron is doing is listening to that track and sort of creating that custom preset within Neutron for that particular track, pre-mixing it um, in connection to everything else. And as you can see, it gave us Sculptor, EQ, Compressor and Exciter. Because podcasting is high intensity, deadlines are short, I haven't got much time, I cannot spend time on mixing each single track, you know, and playing with these EQs and compressors. So I'm using that Mix Assistant and their machine learning technology to do the premix for me. And I'm pretty much using that. If it goes too hard on Sculptor or Exciter, of course I will adjust it, but I'm only using this custom preset set by Neutron and then start writing my automation. So it is very helpful to have that. Of course, that technology will get better with time, but it, it was a game changer when it first started with Neutron 1, I think, yeah. Then, of course, I, um, I bounce it. So all these six tracks are then bounced into that one stereo score track and I write the automation on it again. So it's mixed twice. So that's the three examples I want to show you um, how I use Neutron in my everyday work. So would I recommend Neutron for podcast producers? 100%. If you want to have something that's intuitive and uh, sort of guides you through processes and you do like this machine learning technology as well as the graphical interface, then Neutron is for you. However, before you start spending money, like I said before, you should learn the ropes on the standard plugins that come in within your audio sequencer, whatever you choose to work in. Then you've got to make a decision if you want to venture into something like Neutron or you know, something else, or you're happy with what you got. So that decision is up to you. However, I find that with their intuitive technology, Neutron you know, does a lot of work for me. And in podcast production, which is fast paced with tight deadlines, you know, it's the perfect tool to do a decent and proper mixing job. But that's it for today. I'm Mike Migis. If you enjoy this content, you can check the rest of my channel or my website, mikemigas.com. For now, you can subscribe, share, like, and I'll see you later. Bye.